Julian Kellen, deep down, 834 here on the morning. Dan, it's Dan Pollard along with you before the snow, uh, although it is uh, falling. Nothing really to worry about right now. It's just the light snow that is falling. It's uh, going to become more intense overnight and through tomorrow when the winds pick up. And again, we're looking at another 10 centimeters or so on uh, on Friday. So we will be digging out uh, by the end. Could be up to 30 centimeters of snow uh, when we get up on uh, Saturday morning. It is Wellness Wednesday, and uh, joining us once again, Scott Campbell. Good morning, good sir. Good morning. And you brought along a guest, Shauna Dingman. I did. Yes, chiropractor uh, extraordinaire from Port Perry. Good morning. How Glad are to be you? here. I'm excellent, thanks. How are you? Good, good. So uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to talk about a number of, uh, of different issues on Wellness Wednesday um, and just help people uh, be as healthy as as they can. Um, and I, I know that uh, you had a couple of subjects you wanted to cover today, and uh, maybe we'll start off with the one, probably the the umbrella topic, and that would be finding some space in your life. Sounds good. Uh, okay, I, I, you know, how do I do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the big question. You know, I think this really falls under the umbrella of self-care. And for women, my passion is women's health. This is probably the single biggest thing that I'm hearing more and more in practice now is women coming in and saying, this year, this is the year for me. Right. And so we're looking at all the different aspects of health. And one of the biggest challenges I think that women have is our schedules and how that actually impacts our life. And the idea of how are you actually finding any white space? So when I talk about white space, I'm really talking about a blank that spot on the yeah, calendar? Yeah, literally. A blank yeah. spot on the calendar, a blank spot in your day where you can just sit and start a thought and actually finish it to completion. And I mean, if you're a mom or a wife, you probably know that that is next to impossible in our lives right now without some kind of an interruption. But not having that quiet space to actually think and to process and to really just disconnect from the noisiness and the the distractions of the world, it has a massive impact on our brain, on our neurology, on our whole brain chemistry. And brain science is just exploding with this right now. And we know that the more we can create quiet, the more it changes how our bodies, how our physiology actually responds in a healthful way. I was going to say, because you're a chiropractor, you deal with the physical, but it's that importance, you know, you've got to start, have a good foundation emotionally, otherwise uh, it is going to affect the physical. Absolutely. And I think that's that's the coolest thing about what's coming out in brain science right now and in neurology is how what we think actually changes how our body responds to the environment. You know, people come to see me, it's typically because they have some kind of a health challenge. And a lot of times it's pain. So the pain brings them in. But as we begin to go through the layers of what's really going on in their lives, we see that they, I, I always think that the physical things that we're feeling, the physical pain that we have is usually just a reflection. It's an external reflection of what's going on internally. And so there's that side of my job is to help you kind of help you feel like yourself again so you can get doing some of those basic foundational things in health. But part of it is let's figure out where is the stress coming from and how can you get a handle on what's going on in your mind so that your brain can actually respond better to the world around you. Have there been scientific tie-ins to, I mean, your job is a release, truly, yes. a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, have there been uh, scientific findings that uh, the emotions or whatever uh, do get trapped and do create the inflammation, do create the fluids that you then release? Yes, absolutely. And that's, again, that's some of the biggest research that's happening right now. I mean, you see a lot right now in the news about your gut biome and the health of your gut biome and how that actually affects your mental health. Because what we know now is that there are more neurons in the gut than there are in the peripheral nervous system and the spinal cord put together. So it, they call it the second brain. And I think it's really cool because for you know hundreds of years, we've talked about follow your gut or listen to your gut. Well, now we know there's actually a reason for it. So yes, all of the things that we think, I do believe that it becomes, they call it tissue memory. And until you can, again, just straighten that out and really examine what is it that you're thinking and feeling and how do I begin to just release it and surrender a lot of it? I mean, there's so many things we think we have control of. We don't. And the more we can just let go of those things, the more we can decrease inflammation in our bodies the more our frontal lobes can do the things that it was designed to do, hormonal control, better digestion, 
uh, pain control, all of those things. Well, Scott, I'm interested to, to find out your perspective on this because uh, not only uh, do you train people with karate, but also uh, you went through uh, a bout with cancer. And uh, emotionally, how did you get through that to get to where you are physically now? Um, as far as like when I got diagnosed? Or? Did you, well, when you were uh, going through treatment and, uh, and recovering, you know, your health, um, what effect did it have, uh, you, your emotions have on your body? And what did you tell your body as you were starting to heal? You, you get a lot of tunnel vision because um, when I got diagnosed and they, they said you're going to do a six-month chemo um, treatment. So it was 12 rounds of chemo. So as soon as you start feeling good, they hit you again, do another dose kind of thing because they're trying to kill the cancer cells in, inside your body. Uh, and and um, with me, mentally, you start getting depressed. You start getting, like again, like I said, tunnel, tunnel vision. You start feeling like, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. And then it actually starts to drag you down. Like I uh, I was lucky. I, as far as I'm concerned, my martial arts uh, training and, and, and just the fact that I like doing what I do helped me a lot because I only really called in sick three days. It just, I just kept on teaching because I really enjoy the people that I'm interacting with and, and it got me out. Uh, we got a dog, you know, so that got me to go out because if you don't go out, the dog goes in, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so I, I uh, but you're trying to wrap your head constantly um, to, to, to get around those mental blocks that are constantly thrown at you. And we were talking about that even last week that you, you've got to find that instinct to go or that motivation to go and push yourself. So because at times your emotions are probably telling you, okay, shut it down. Yeah. Oh shut yeah. It shut it down. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And especially like when it's minus 12 outside and, and when I was on a drug, uh, oxaliplatin and it was, uh, something that affected my nerves as far as my throat. And, and, and so a cold air, it hit my throat and it wasn't, wasn't that anything was physically happening, but the nerve endings were, were going numb. And so it was almost feeling like I was choking. So I'd have to put like big scars on my face and, and, uh, but you found a way around it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, just, you got to live, you got to survive. And it's interesting talking, we were talking about this yesterday, Shauna and I, and we had a sign outside um, our old location and uh, it was just pretty much like the one we've got now. And it's just something that I could change all the time, put little catchphrases and slogans or advertise stuff. And one of the things we just for on a whim, we said, you know, find time for yourself, find time for karate. And we had more women giving us responses that, you know, you, it's like you were talking to me because I'm so busy. And, you know, and, and uh, it ended up. You know, that's where we got our phone call inquiries. It was like, if I look back, it was almost all women. It was just, that just seemed to respond. For some reason, guys don't have that thing that you know, sort of tells them that they got to save the world. You know, right. So, yeah. so it, it just, you know, when you're talking about you know, the mental blocks, like that, that's one of them. And women are probably their, their own worst enemy because, they, you know, I've got to look after the kids. I got to look after the husband. I got to look you know, after work if they're, they're working, you know, and, you know, um, so I, I think, this is really valid conversation. Oh, well, it's huge. Now, uh, Shauna, I guess, uh, is one way to, to get that message across uh, the old uh, airplane uh, flight attendant message is <laughs> if you don't take that oxygen mask first, then you're not going to help anybody because you're not going to be any good to anybody. Yeah, for sure. That's a, It's a great analogy, and we certainly use it a lot. I think for some reason, women almost need to be given permission. You know, Scott, when you're talking about that sign, I think one of the reasons you got a lot of phone calls is because the sign itself gave women permission to do the thing that they wanted to do, but needed to have somebody validate it. And I think that's one of the really valuable things that we as healthcare practitioners can do for women is to tell them, not only do I give you permission, but there's a need for this. Like I, as your doctor, I am prescribing to you that you need to look after yourself. You need to find some things in your life that give you joy. And you need to give yourself permission to figure out a way to be able to do those things, whether it's get a babysitter. Sometimes it's just ask your partner or your spouse. Uh, you know, I really think that the, the partners in our lives, they truly want us as women to be happy. They just often, they don't know what to do. They, they, they feel helpless. They see it happening, but they don't know what to do. And I think that we, and I've, I've certainly been guilty of this, I think, well, I can't ask my husband to do this because then it's harder for everybody. Whereas he's thinking, I don't know what to do, but if you just tell me what, I, what you, you want me to do, I'm so happy to do it. So sometimes it's delegating some things out that, that you don't need to do, somebody else can do. Sometimes it's, you know, getting a high school student, pay them 10 or $15 an hour to come in and 
do up some dishes and put a load of wash in and just look after your kids for a while so you can go out and try a karate class. Do something different. Do something fun. Just get together with somebody at Starbucks or go and have a coffee and read a book all on your own. But do something for yourself. Well, fun and movement. Yes, for sure. Movement's huge. Yep. And movement stimulates good feelings, good moves. I mean, we've had, gosh, the exercise physiology research has been supportive of that for decades now, that movement. And what we know now is that spinal movement in particular It helps to create endorphins. It helps to normalize hormone activity. It helps to normalize all the good feelings that we really need, help to regulate serotonin and all of the neurotransmitters that help us feel better. So movement is a big thing. Well, listen, as we wrap up, I just want to talk about uh, chiropractic and uh, because, you know, we were joking. I'm not going to, you know, do the any, uh, it's all cracked up, you know, the, the chiropractor jokes. Um, oh, but really? the, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you today, Scott, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, but talk about, uh, as we close off, uh, how your practices have, have changed over the years, because originally that's, you know, you'd go in, get, you know, get cracked, whatever, and realigned and off you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's much more than that now. Yeah, that's true. You know, when I first started in practice 20 years ago, I mostly just focused on the chiropractic aspect, come, having people come in, doing a thorough examination, getting some imaging usually, and then adjusting. And what I found is that, you know, for the time that you're in my office, there's only so much that I can do, but there's all the other hours of the day and week that Your you Your homework. Can, basically, yeah, you can be going out and undoing everything that I did. And so my husband, Craig, is also a chiropractor. He's in Aurora. And we just found that the more we could begin to help educate people and teach people about some of the other, just the, the basic building blocks of health. How does nutrition impact your health? How does movement impact your health? How do your thoughts impact your health? And so we've really begun to incorporate a lot of that into our practices. So I've sort of split off and I have my own kind of satellite practice in Port Perry, and it's really focused on the care of women and children only. And so I've actually started doing a lot of functional testing there as well. So we can do genetic testing. We can do hormone testing. There's a lot of extra things that we can provide because I I find that women's health is very complex. What made you focus on that, though? What made you decide to streamline towards women? Well, I think like many of us, we do what we do because we've had our own sort of health journey. And so I found I've had my own health challenges over the years, and it's really difficult when you have to go to this person and that person and the other person and nobody's talking. Mm -hmm. And so the more we can find what we're looking for in one place and have this collaborative style. Yeah. You know, um, so when I work with massage therapists or naturopaths, we talk, we share information about the patient. And I figure the more I can do within the walls of my office, people are there, they're looking for all those things. The more I can just provide it. It's like one stop shopping. Well, if someone is interested, how can they uh, get a hold of you? Well, they can go to my website, elevatewomenshealth.ca. They can find me on Facebook, Shauna Dingman, or my um, my business page is Elevate Women's Health, or you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Shauna Dingman. You can see her at the dojo, too. She does karate really well. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, throwing around, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we break them, she fixes them now. <laughs> oh, <is that> you? <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, uh, Scott, you'll be back again uh, next Wednesday, and... Uh, I, I love doing this uh, segment because I think it's uh, it's going to be valuable. And even if it touches one person out there, uh, then then we've done our job at, at this end to be able to give someone uh, a place to, to talk to. Well, I like just coming in and talking to you. So this is sort of my break in the day. <laughs> oh, okay. This is my white space. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I just I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, and that's very... 